Buckle up, buckaroos, because at the start of this week, oh boy, oh boy indeed, we are going to be covering, quite frankly, what's been happening last week. Because I'll tell you now, Jesus Christ, there has been some humdingers coming about about these negotiations. And I'll tell you now, what's frightening is the stuff we don't know. And those are the ones, the negotiations that are happening with the US. Those are the ones that we will not know until the ink is drying on the paper. And if there's something that we as a public say, hey, why on earth have we, have we done that? What, what's, what's going on? Too late. <laughs> Too late. Sorry, can't do that. <laughs> and as, I, as I've said before, if you think... Um, if you think trying to leave uh, the EU and the stuff we've been going through is is hard, it, it's not. It's been a mess of our own making. But if you think in any way that has been hard, us leaving the European Union and the past three years and all the political nonsense and calamity is is, is caused is going to be a walk in the park trying to get out of the trade deal we might have signed with Donald Trump and the stuff that could be contained in that. And dear viewers, I'd like to take you back to a prediction I made, used to make on this channel uh, a number of years ago. And I'm going to start making it again because I still believe in a couple of years this will become the, the, the call and the crying sound of the Brexiteers. Um, it will be this. This isn't the Brexit I voted for, or we voted for. And I guarantee you, one day, that will be on the front page of either the Daily Mail or the Daily Express. Guarantee. And good God, if that ever does happen, if that ever, ever does happen, I will buy that newspaper and just parade it on this channel forever i will i will frame it back here and and just have it and i will just use it as a continuous point of reference <laughs> to, to what happened because here's the thing we wow go back to the very start of when we were talking about um brexit and what what's happening you may remember we covered a book called the great brexit swindle and it was all about what these far right hard right wing tories actually really wanted to do to the uk and that they were going to try and swindle away rights and protections for us as as not only as a as workers but as consumers um, and protections environmental standards you name it they wanted to get rid of it because these, you know, these pesky standards have been, been in the way. We are, we're dealing with free market fundamentalists who essentially say that the government should have absolutely no say in how the economy is run and that essentially greed and unfettered capitalism should just be the plain order of the day. And of course, what's been happening in these negotiations? This comes... From our uh, Ian Dunt in politics.co.uk, and is of course smuggling no deal Brexit under the COVID emergency. It's an opinion that's been bouncing around the government. The Tory parliamentary party and the more denigrate, uh, uh, denigrating newspapers for and uh, denigrating newspapers for a while now. It seems to be a developing into a kind of linguistic consensus. A coronavirus emergency is apparently the best time to pursue a no-deal Brexit. Because the damage would be so discernible in its, in its ruins. The Brexit talks seem to have reached an impasse this week. Over the usual issues, the level playing field provisions and fish. It is quite remarkable that after all this time... Fish is still the thing that we're talking about, but there we go. Attempting to understand this Hall of Mirrors adventure uh, into a broken mind uh, was trying at best of times. 
it's like adapting the film uh, Joker into a political policy. The deadlock injected some ed energy into the no extension lobby. That this would be uh, this, this would be a broader checks and tariffs. The spectators, James Forsyth said, in an attempt to describe the argument uh, swirling around Brexit circles in the government. In normal times, this would be regarded as the biggest economic shift in a generation. But coronavirus has collapsed world trade and travel, dwarfing the challenges Brexit might bring. This has, th there's a couple of things to note here. The first is that the logically, uh, that the logic implicates, accepts the remain argument of 2016 to 19. Gone are the unicorns for everyone and rainbow fantasies of the referendum camp uh, of the referendum campaign. But gone too are the increasingly desperate promises of the years afterwards, when we were assured that no deal was nothing to worry about, and that it would in fact unleash Britain's latent trading genius. Hardline Brexiteers are now happy to admit that no deal will do damage. How far have we come? How far have we, have we come from that? It, it's quite frankly amazing. It generally is. And it's like, hang on, these guys now are now admitting that no deal Brexit will do damage. How come they were fine and saying that and admitting that now, but all those years ago, as, as stated there from 2016 to 19, there was, oh no, it's going to be fine, sunny, uplit Luplands with unicorns and it'll be great and fine. Oh dear, oh dear. Second, is that it is an operation it is operational almost completely insane. The reasoning is this things are very, very bad. Therefore, it is the perfect moment to make them worse. It is an argument which is not least bit interested in the fortune of the country and the entirely dependent upon the success of a particular political tribe. Or, if it is not, su uh, not success exactly, then it is able to uh, slide a sensational victory amid the distraction of widespread economic collapse. The irony is that this can all be made to go away very quickly. It just requires the UK to extend the transition. So that it can work on the uh, deal sensibly after the emergency. The EU can request the same thing, of course, but number 10 has made it clear it would reject any extension if asked for. Um, so, ultimately, it is this decision has to be made by London. There is no danger to it. Recent polls by Best for Britain have showed widespread public support for an extension, but the most deranged Brexit supporters understand it isn't the issue right now. Anyone, even a tiny residual bit of sense, would be mortified to see us dis uh, decline, uh, uh, de dedicating resources to this stuff in the heart of a pandemic. And yet, they go on, like a dog chasing a car, dreaming it is a king. If, if they really do force no deal through on these terms at this time, in these circumstances, it will be an unforgivable act of hubris and monomania. And that, my friends, is, is why I think we're going to head for a no-deal Brexit. I completely agree. I've, I've been saying this. A no-deal Brexit has been their, um, their coal line for quite some time. Again, remember the, the, the campaign, the whole referendum campaign they ran? About the swath of, of options? And yet not one of those options ever got really seriously discussed after the end of that campaign. Remember, we could be like Norway. We could be in the single market and customs union. We could just be in the customs union. We could um, go, go and get this amazing Canada Plus Plus deal. No one at that entire referendum campaign ever discussed leaving on a no deal scenario. This is ironically not what the people voted for. It goes against the will of the people. <laughs> Why? Because the Leave campaign ran such a wide gambit of options and ideas. 
that ironically, no a no deal Brexit is the one thing that they didn't actually campaign on. But there you go. Once again, the Brexit mess and Brexit train just continues to chug on. And oh boy, if you think the 2008 crash was, was hard on you, imagine this now. Not only have we had a... Well, we, well, by look, well looking at a potential another financial crash hasn't happened yet although lots of economies say it's it's round the corner um but then we're going to couple onto that the disastrous effects of a no deal brexit so you make things from being bad to even worse and that will be on the the brexiteers trying to force this through and I, I've got to, I feel like I've got to make this um, distinction at some point. When I'm saying Brexit is now, I think I've got to really discern between people who are Brexit supporters and Brexit is themselves. And I'm talking about the people that are actually pushing for Brexit. People are actually in power still pushing for that Brexit. People who are part of the Leave campaign themselves. So I think I'm going to start, really starting to actually differentiate when I'm talking about Brexit supporters who would be like, you know, you or me, just the general public versus the Brexiteers who are the ones in charge of all this mess. And at the end of the day, they're the ones going to be to blame for this. Because it can all go away very easily. All you have to do is we need an extension. And here's the thing. I think... Very possibly, um, a lot of the parties, even other Conservatives themselves, are going to go. Are going to go. We can't do this. I think there is going to be a massive fight coming. And I, I think it it's potentially already starting. The idea of we can't just leave on a no deal. We have to have a, a, a transition period because no. Conservative is going to risk their neck to crash the well, not only just you know, it's like having a car crash has already happened, and then they're just going to go, Well, we're going to crash another car into it. No one is going to make want to make that situation even worse. So, I think towards the end of this year, you could have a very, very very interesting fight um, and interestingly a very interesting split in the Tory party the question is will it come will Johnson still be in charge who knows will this be what takes Johnson out who knows it's all up in the air at this moment it really is but I suspect it's coming